Hello everyone, for this video we're going to be talking about the uh, distance transform uh, and how we can use the distance transform to help us with uh, segmentation for uh, problems where we have uh, an, an overlap between different segmented objects that we are trying to uh, differentiate. Um, so let's um, first look at what the distance transform uh, actually does. So the basic idea of the distance transform is just that we uh, we have some object in some background and for every pixel of the object we would like to know how far in terms of Euclidean distance, uh, so simple Euclidean distance in the image space, uh, how far is it is any, po any pixel from the object from the uh, closest pixel in the background. And so just to visualize it, Let's uh, make a fake image. So I'm making a 100 by 100 pixels um, image, filling it with zero. So this is the background. And uh, at the center of the, um, of the image, I'm making a large square that I fill with one. So this is my binary mask that, uh, that represents one object surrounded by a background. And then, we, then I will call the uh, distance transform um, method from uh, SciPy and uh, the distance transform will compute for every uh, point, for every pixel within that uh, object, the distance to the uh, background. And what I will have in return will be a distance map uh, where every pixel in the background is still set to zero, but for every pixel in inside of the square, I, uh, I see the increasing distance as I get closer to the uh, center of the object where I have um, a value here of 30. Um, so this uh, can be uh, very useful when we want to, um, to basically uh, determine uh, where the, uh, the, 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 the center of objects are. Uh, so the center of, of, of an object will typically be uh, the point or the points that are um, further f uh, the furthest away from the uh, from, from the background. So if we have an image um, with multiple objects and we take uh, we compute the distance transform in it, the local maximum of the distance transform should correspond to points which are at the very least well inside of uh, of objects. And this is often a useful information. Either if we want to, to look at the texture of an object and we want to be sure that we are mostly inside the object and not uh, close to the background, if we take the, the maximum from the distance transform, we are sure that we, are, we, that we will have as much of the object uh, as possible. And also, as we are going to see, when we want to uh, detect uh, that there are uh, overlapping objects. Um, and one, um, one common application that we can have for this type of, uh, of algorithm is the application of uh, nuclei detection in, uh, in microscopy. Um, and so I'm going to be showing here an example, um, an example image. Uh, so this is a microscopy image um, where we can see some, uh, some biological tissue. Uh, and in the tissue, we have a coloration that, uh, that's, uh, that shows the, uh, the nuclei of the cells. So here we have uh, different uh, cells with their uh, their nuclei, which are very uh, very dark here. So this image comes uh, from the the deep learning uh, datasets from uh, from Andrew Janovchik. So uh, this was also there's also a very nice tutorial on how to use uh, deep learning methods to uh, to find the uh, the the nuclei in these images, and we also have. The, um, the data set, so with the images and the uh, ground truth annotation. So this is a very, uh, very nice uh, data set that, that you can use. Here I'm just going to focus on one image and trying to find some, um, <coughs> some expert system to, uh, to, to, to just uh, try to segment as best as possible uh, the uh, nuclei. And so when we look at, at uh, this image, the, the clear things that allow that will allow us to differentiate the nuclei from the rest of the image is based on the intensity of this uh, of this color. So we could start uh, using uh, HSV to try uh, to to do the same kind of stuff that we did um, uh, uh, in the immunohistochemistry uh, images with brown and uh, and blue channels, um, but. 
uh, here we have actually a tool that's uh, fairly uh, useful that's already uh, provided by um, Scikit image uh, which is that we can convert this image to a specific color, color space called uh, HED which uh, it's basically it, it takes into account the fact that we know because of the um, uh, medical um, uh, processes that uh, that uh, this uh, so the, the biological processes that this uh, uh, image goes through we know the stains that 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 are used to to produce this kind of image and so we can make a, a color transform that will uh, give us as color channels the, dif the, the, the different states that are used in the image. So we'll have one, one color channel for the uh, bluish color, one color channel for the uh, pink uh, uh, for the pink color, and, um, and the third one I don't remember. Uh, um, but anyway, this will allow us to actually have a, a channel um, where, we, uh, where we have uh, a very strong uh, signal for the um, for the uh, nuclei and a relatively weak signal everywhere else. So if I'm just uh, looking at that, uh, so I can do the conversion with RGB to HED, and uh, then I'm going to uh, just show the HED, the first channel. And here I have, uh, let me go to the to grayscale, the map gray. Uh, so here we have um, a, a grayscale values, which are uh, here uh, very low, even ne negative in uh, in most of the tissue, but which uh, become um, larger. Uh, so it's still negative here, but it's uh, brighter in the um, in the uh, nuclei uh, regions. So this is uh, very uh, application specific to. Um, to uh, digital pathology, um, but uh, here it's, it will allow us to, to kind of show the, the, the problem. And so here I've just created a, a very, very basic algorithm using stuff that we've seen before to try to, to, to find uh, the, the nuclei. And what I'm doing is so transforming the image in this uh, HED color space using a simple Otsu thresholding to, uh, to, to find a mask um, so to, 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 to find a binary, binary mask uh, with those nuclei and then just using some morphological operations to clean up the, um, the results. So first the uh, opening here will remove any uh, small uh, objects that, that might have been uh, taken by the, by the thresholding. So if there are any small isolated uh, relatively high value uh, pixels in the image that probably don't correspond to an actual nuclei, it will be removed by this opening without changing too much the morphology of the, uh, of the other objects. Um, and then afterwards, with uh, closing, I will um, close any uh, holes that, that might, uh, any small holes that might be uh, inside uh, actual objects if we have a part where the stain is not so strong and so we have sometimes some small darker patches inside the objects and so that will uh, remove those. Um, afterward, I'm just using the uh, mark boundaries method from Scikit image, which we have used in the watershed uh, video, uh, just to display uh, the uh, the results uh, that that we that we have. And so it's a bit hard to see uh, in here, but if I go and zoom in on uh, any particular region, I can see that I have a, a very simple method that basically separates the uh, nuclei from the rest of the um, of the image. And it's far from perfect, but it's relatively good for such a simple algorithm. But the problem that we can see is that um, the, we only have one single uh, object for uh, large uh, groups of uh, of cells that are uh, close together. So all of those cells are really, um, really close together. And here the segmentation that we have does not allow us to, uh, to find the, uh, where one cell begins and one where the other ends. And since for those um, uh, medical application, one of the things that we typically want to do is count the number of nuclei. Of course, this is uh, a problem uh, if we cannot differentiate between two uh, neighboring um, uh, neighboring nuclei. Um, so 
what can we do to, to help us here? We can try to use the uh, distance transform. And so the first thing that I uh, can do is quite simply uh, apply the distance transform to, uh, to the mask that we have. So here we have um, what, what we actually computed um, was uh, the binary mask with, um, with uh, so once where we have, um, where we have uh, um, a nuclei and zeros where we don't have a nuclei. Um, and so I can compute the distance transform on that. And I will have something where I, I, I have for every pixel that is inside a, uh, uh, of, of a nuclei, I will have the distance from the, uh, from the background to, uh, to that pixel. And so the interesting thing here is that I can expect that the local maximum the local maxima from this distance transform will tend to be points which are at the uh, center of uh, the cells. Um, and that's really uh, interesting because um, since the uh, object that we are trying to, to find here are typically relatively um, uh, round shapes, um, we, we, we should have mostly uh, one peak for each um, one discrete peak, or at least uh, a, a small group of, uh, of neighboring uh, pixels as peaks for every uh, cell that we have. That's at least the uh, assumption that we are going to, to be making uh, here. And so we can use the peak local max method, uh, again, that we have uh, used before for, the, for finding markers. And we are going to be looking for markers in that image and taking a minimum distance between the marker of uh, three um, pixels and this will give me uh, so in this case uh, about 1700 uh, markers and I can try to uh, plot them on the image to have a look at what I found and if I look uh, at this here I will see that this is clearly far uh, far from from from, uh, from perfect but mostly uh, we tend to have one or two or um, a few uh, adjacent, that's uh, normally um, fine, um, uh, markers in each of the, uh, of the cell that we, that we are trying to, uh, to find. So again, far from perfect, but for such a simple algorithm, it's already a pretty decent uh, result. Um, so what can we do now? Um, with those markers, we can apply, for instance, the uh, region growing algorithm like the watershed. So in this case, I'm going to be using the watershed. So I'm going to be first computing the, um, the gradient uh, of, the, of the mask to find the border. Um, so if I take the, the gradient of the, um, of, the, of the mask image, so the mask that I computed here, um, I will have just the, uh, the, the border. So this will be um, saying to the watershed algorithm, this is where you, you have to stop, basically. I want to grow the regions until you find uh, a, a, a border. Um, and uh, here I'm just recomputing the, uh, the local max, uh, so to have it in the, in the shape of the image instead of having a list of coordinates. And then I'm labeling the markers so that uh, every um, marker that is not directly connected to another one uh, will have a separate uh, label assigned to it. Um, now I can uh, apply the watershed and I will apply it on this uh, gradient uh, image. So this will, be, this will give me the valleys and the peaks in, of my watershed algorithm. The markers will give me the source uh, from where we will start the region growing. And I, will, uh, I want to apply the watershed only on uh, the, the mask. So that means that if at some, for some reason we get outside of the, of the mask, uh, it's, uh, it's immediately, uh, we stop the region going anyway, we keep everything outside of the mask as a uh, background. Um, so we we'll apply the watershed and, uh, and here we're going to just compare the uh, results, um, the result from the, um, from just a simple uh, thresholding, so just the, the mask with the result that we have with our um, distant transform and watershed. And uh, what we uh, can see is that if we, for instance, zoom again in this uh, part, here we had just one big uh, object, but here we found uh, multiple objects which are more or less well uh, separated. So again, it's not 
necessarily always perfect, but for the most part, we have every cell which is which has been uh, split in a different uh, object, and we can have a look at other parts of the of the image, and we will see the same kind of things. So the borders are not uh, not always perfect. Uh, sometimes we still have some some uh, objects which are probably uh, which probably should be um, split further. There are some uh, objects that should probably be merged. But overall, uh, we still get a relatively uh, decent uh, results. Um, and more importantly, uh, this means that we also get uh, a more uh, realistic count of the, uh, of in this case, the, the number of objects, so in this case, the, the, the number of, of uh, nuclei that we have in the image. Um, so here we have the um, the actual output of the of the algorithm. So this is the the mask where um, uh, so coming out from the watershed where for every cell we have a different number. So if you look uh, at the bottom right uh, here, we we see that the number changes when I move from one cell uh, to the other. So this is the the, the la uh, each object that has been labeled by the uh, watershed. Um, and so if we just take the, um, so, so since each uh, object will, will be assigned a unique uh, label starting from, um, from uh, so zero for the background and so one for the first object and then uh, moving uh, up, uh, if I take the maximum value of, the, uh, of this uh, object uh, mask, I will have the number of objects that were detected. And so here I can know that I, the algorithm detected uh, 1,352 uh, separate um, uh, regions. So this number is smaller than the number of markers since there were some markers that, um, that were uh, um, adjacent to each other and so that, that produced uh, one single uh, label. Um, so here I have so the number of cells and I have a rough segmentation of each individual cell in the, uh, in the image. Um, so this is the kind of things that the, the distance transform can be um, used for, uh, and this uh, kind of show the way that we can uh, uh, use prior information that we have about an image, in this case about the, the color, but also about the shape of the object that we are looking for, to try to design uh, an algorithm that is adapted to the task that we are trying to uh, achieve. So that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.